first of all, I'm proud of our kids. <clears throat> uh, tremendous season. Tough to go out like this. Uh, I thought <clears throat> Harvest Prep made some tremendous defensive plays. I think Dennis had nine steals, if I'm looking at this right. And, and they were real timely. We had trouble scoring in the, in the half court setting due to their pressure defense, which we haven't seen very much <clears throat> this year that, 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 to that extent. But, <clears throat> you know, I, I think it was mid fourth quarter. I think it was tied, if I'm not mistaken, or very close to being tied. We had some, some turnovers that were uncharacteristic, and they were caused by their defensive pressure. And I think that you know, it got us in a jam that we couldn't get out of. But uh, credit to them. Our kids never quit. Uh, <clears throat> had a lot of fight in us. Just it, uh, we, we struggled shooting the ball, and I think they, they had they were eight for 19 from the three. And we had saw them on film, and they hadn't shot the ball that well at times. So one of our one of our game plans was going in was they didn't shoot it well here <coughs> last year. They were 0 for 15 from three land. I thought it was a pretty good game plan, but I think they hit the first four threes they took, and then that changed everything. So we had to regroup. Go back and take another take another shot at what we wanted to do, and uh, I thought our man to man was good. You know, for you know, we lost him a few times down the lane. Um, <clears throat> a lot of weapons. It was just a lot of weapons to defend, and I thought David played really well inside. I thought he caused him a lot of trouble, um, and I thought Ethan Ethan had a very good game handling the ball and scoring against that kind of pressure. So, um, <clears throat> just a tough loss. Jimmy, you weren't able to get into your game, really, where your turnovers, the turnovers by them, which you guys points uh, Yeah, Yeah, the whole year we had, we had kind of done what they, what they did to us tonight, and that's pressure the ball, turn it over. But <clears throat> they, uh, they got guys that, that have played together, not only in the winter, but in the summer together. I think that team continues on, and I think they were used to that type of thing, and some of our kids haven't seen that pressure. And... Uh, <clears throat> We just felt if we did that to them, we were going to give up layups. And the times we tried to pressure them, it seems like that hurt us more than helped us. So we didn't, we didn't extend it like we were used to. Jim, the, uh, the shots obviously weren't falling for much of the game. Uh, you fell behind early uh, and then started to work your way back. And it kind of almost had the, the feel of the Plymouth game in the regional semis. Uh, was there any kind of that sense that sooner or later these shots were going to start falling? Yeah, you'd like to think so, but they closed out <clears throat> so much better than Plymouth. Their team speed was so much better than Plymouth. We got so many more open looks at Plymouth that I felt sooner or later, you know, we were going to, you know, Corbin got some some looks that ordinarily you'd get to pull the trigger, and man, they closed out and got there. Um, so <clears throat> it just this was a different type of ball game. They were really really making sure that those were tough contested shots for Corbin, um, and so we went, you know. David was was option B. Ethan, you know, we just did different things that we felt we could we could be successful with them. Coach, was it kind of surprising uh, at how quickly they jumped out to that lead in that first quarter, or what was that first reaction like? Very surprising. But if I remember right, uh, we we missed quite a few layups. It seemed like right in there, like we had some point blank sh on on the shot rim shots, just three footers. You know, <coughs> typically we make, and I don't, for whatever the reason, might have been nerves, might have been. Uh, they're, you know, the way they jump, kind of looking for people maybe over our shoulders. But we missed, and that got us in a jam. And then they turned out, come down the other end, and they wasn't just one of them. I mean, I know number ten it got hot early, uh, but well, it just seemed like they were raining threes all over the place. So they went our zone, you know, then we had to come out of our zone, and then that put us. They're quicker than us. We didn't want to get to that unless we had to, to get to our man to man. So, but it, but ironically, our man was probably better tonight than our zone. Yeah, late second, most of the third. I think we held them to six points in the third, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? I, I'm guessing at that. Uh, but the fourth quarter, they really ramped their defense up. We had trouble even entering the ball to the wing. And uh, it's just something we didn't adapt well to. And uh, when we did have to apply pressure, it, it just it's just tough to cover that many athletes. They're, they're quick everywhere. And uh, that's the way it ended up. So. 
Ethan, could you touch on the difficulty of going against their, their style and their quickness and that? Well, we don't play much against that in the regular season. It's a whole new ball game, really. Um, they take you out of your sets. They take you out of your just main offense, and it's hard. So you got to adapt. And we did for a little bit, and then kind of struggled. Um, yeah, I guess they, they gave me that shot, so I was lucky enough to be able to hit him tonight. And then other things opened up, and this Coop wasn't hitting, and David stepped up, and other players, and worked out. David felt like down in the post, 15 points, nine boards, and three blocks. It felt like you really had a command of the game in the second and third quarter, and then all, and in the fourth, you even continued that even as Harvest just kept on going. Did you feel like you guys had a decent defense play on the paint and just kind of kept them outside, or what was going on? Well, like the first half, I didn't play the best. I probably could have, but then at halftime, I realized it kind of probably might be my last if we don't step it up. So we just uh, looked at our options, and I tried to do the best I can on that. What was the big difference that you noticed in the fourth quarter as opposed to the third quarter when you guys traded leads a couple times and made a quality game? Um, just other guys started stepping up, and then we looked at a pick and roll a little bit and some backdoor plays that kind of opened up for us. They did a nice job of making us shoot shots that the toughest shots on the floor, like, like Ethan said, pull-up jump shots. It's a kind of a lost art anymore in, in basketball. Um, you know, and then, like I say, they were so extended. David, I thought David, David did a really nice job adapting to, you know, they were just smothering him when he got it. And I thought he did a really good job of getting stronger as the game went. A couple times they got him and we didn't get, we were right there and they stripped it right out of our hands, which we typically do as well. But they were, they did a good job. So David did a really good job adjusting, I think, as the game went. Um, but uh, they, made, they made some really good shots too. Credit to them. Jim, I know this is uh, probably a little early for retrospect, uh, retrospection, but uh, the last game of, of Corbin's career, the last game for David and the rest of the senior class, uh, what does it mean to you to, to be in this situation? We had four great seniors. Uh, <clears throat> you know, they played a lot of games. It's, they were involved in three twenty-one seasons, you know, and, and that's that's something to be respected. I mean, our schedule's no no <coughs> slouch. I think we play a pretty good schedule. Um, <clears throat> David got hurt throughout that. Other kids stepped up, um, made a decision to to come back a week early from his cast off. But the, the thing we told our kids was we we had zero disciplinary reactions this year. We had it was nothing but a great season from start to finish. We didn't have anybody selfish. Um, it was just a, it was one of my most memorable, most uh, you know, and including having a son involved. You know, it was it was really tough in that locker room. So we're gonna miss them. They're great kids. Coach, how was it to have Coach Welch on the bench with you? <laughs> Obviously, he's been down here before, and he's been almost everywhere. He has. <laughs> he gets around, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, he's been a <clears throat> he's like I said, he, he's been a, a very good mentor to me. I started in 89 as his seventh grade coach for a year. Then I went to eighth for a couple years, moved up and coached JV with him for about maybe 11 to 13 years. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, back in the years, we were talking about this coming down. We had the St. Henry games back in the day. We had some pretty good runs when I just started. Um, and, and so a lot of shared memories. Um, it's nice to be able to turn back and, you know, remember what we did back in the day uh, and reflect on those uh, situations. And, uh, I, you know, I've always said guys like Mr. Dick Hortacrax and Al, they forgot more basketball than I'll ever know, you know. It's just nice to have a sounding board like that. So he's been a, not only a, a, great, a great coach for me, but a great friend. <clears throat> Any more questions? Okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs>